how to fix Minecraft error, linkage error occurred while loading main class net.minecraft.bundler.main. If you have just attempted to run your self-hosted Minecraft server and have received the following error message, error colon linkage error occurred while loading main class net.minecraft.bundler.main java.lang.unsupported class version error colon net slash minecraft slash bundler slash main has been compiled by a more recent version of the java runtime in brackets class file version 61.0 this version of the java runtime only recognizes class file versions up to 60.0 this minecraft server of mine is self-hosted on my current computer as you can see at the very top i attempted to run the minecraft start command and then received the following error message and in my bat file i also have a separate line with the word pause and above it I have the minecraft start command which is at the top here. If you're receiving this error message then the Java program that you currently have installed on your computer is outdated. Most likely you have Java SE development kit 16. For minecraft server.jar files 1.18 and above, you now require Java SE Development Kit 17 and above. The Minecraft server that I'm trying to run is for the server.jar file 1.18.1, which also requires Java SE Development Kit 17 and above. Java SE Development Kit 17 is currently the most recent version of Java at the time of recording of this video. If you come to this video later, most likely there'll be a higher version of Java and you can install that latest version of Java for the latest version of your Minecraft server. I'm now going to take you through the process of installing Java SE Development Kit 17. So all I'm going to do is close out out of the CMD terminal window. Once done, open up your browser and navigate to the following URL address, https colon slash slash www.oracle.com slash java slash technologies slash downloads. Once you're here guys, you'll be on the Java downloads page. Scroll down a bit to where you see where it says Java 17 available now. And underneath that, you can see the latest version of Java 17, which is Java SE development kit 17.0.2 at the time of recording of this video. You're going to need to select the appropriate version of Java for your operating system. There are three tabs, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. As you can see, by default, it's on Linux. I'm on Windows, so I'm simply going to left click on the Windows tab here. If you're also on Windows, look for the x64 installer, and to the right hand side, you'll be able to see the download link. Simply left click on the download link. A small window will then open, prompting you to pick a save location, which as you can see, I've chosen downloads, a file name, and a save as type. I'm going to be leaving everything as it is, and I'm going to be left clicking on save to start the download process. All right guys, I'll be back with you once Java SE Development Kit 17.02 has successfully downloaded. All right guys, I'm back. And as you can see, the Java SE Development Kit 17.02 has fully downloaded. I'm now going to open up the installer by navigating to the bottom left hand corner of my browser and clicking on the arrow right next to our download. Once done, left click on open. You'll then be greeted with a user account control if you're on Windows, asking you, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And then the name of the program, which is Java TM SE Development Kit 17.02. You have the option to press yes or no. Of course, guys, if you want to run your self-hosted Minecraft server on your computer, then you'll need to left click on yes. Once you've done that, the Windows installer for Java SE Development Kit 17.02 will then open. Click next on the first page of setup. If you're happy with the default install location of the Java SE development kit, click next. If you're not, you can click on change to change the location. Once you've done that, you can click on next also. Once you've done that guys, the Java SE development kit 17.02 will then begin installing onto your PC. Once done, you'll be greeted with the following message. Java SE Development Kit 17.02. In here guys, it will be the latest version of the Java SE Development Kit 64-bit successfully installed. All that's left to do now guys is to close out of the installer. I'm now going to minimize my browser to be taken back to the folder which contains my Minecraft server files. I'm now going to navigate to the batch file or bat file and before I start my Minecraft server once again using the bat file, I'm going to need to edit out the word pause. So all I'm I'm going to do is navigate to my Windows batch file which contains my server start command and I'm going to right click on it. 
Once done, I'm going to left click on show more options, and then I'm simply going to left click on edit. The bat file will then open in a notepad or in another text editor, whatever your default text editor is for your PC. As you can see guys, at the very top is the Minecraft start command and underneath is the word pause. I'm just going to delete the word pause and then I'm simply going to left click on file and left click on save to save the changes I have just made to my batch file. And then I'm going to left click on the X to close out of my batch file. Now all that's left to do is double click on my server start command, which is my Windows batch file. Once done, your Minecraft server will then begin starting. All I'm going to do now guys is just maximize this window here and allow my self-hosted Minecraft server to start. I'll be back with you guys once my Minecraft server is fully running. You may be greeted with a Windows security alert if you're on Windows which says Windows Defender Firewall has blocked some features of this app. Windows Defender Firewall has blocked some features of Java TM platform SE binary on all public and private networks. As you can see guys, the name of the file which Windows Defender has blocked some features for is the freshly installed Java platform SE binary by the publisher Oracle. And as you can see, if we look at the file path here, it says JDK 17.02, which is the freshly installed Java SE development kit 17.02, which we just installed on our computer and upgraded from the older Java SE development kit. Underneath it says, allow Java TM platform SE binary to communicate on these networks. You have private networks such as home or work network. Underneath you have public networks, such as those in airports and cafes, not recommended because these networks often have little or no security. I'm at home guys, so I'm going to be check marking private networks and I'm going to be on check marking public networks. At the bottom left you can also see blue hyperlink text which says what are the risks of allowing an app through a firewall. You have the option to allow access or cancel. I'm going to be allowing access guys as I'm at home on my private network and this is the network that I want the Java SE development kit to communicate on. So all I'm going to do is left click on allow access and as you can see in the background our Minecraft server was starting and now it has indeed fully started and has reached 100%. And at the very bottom, it says done, which confirms that our self-hosted Minecraft server is now running. Great guys. Now in the second part of this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can fix the same issue on a Minecraft server hosted online via a server host provider. So all I'm going to do now, guys, is minimize out of this CMD terminal window, and I'm going to close out of the folder, which contains our self-hosted Minecraft server files by simply left-clicking on the X here. And as you can see, guys, I'm now back on my desktop. The first thing I'm going to need to do is connect to my Minecraft server, which is hosted by a server host provider. To do this, I'm going to need to use an SSH client to connect to my server via the SSH protocol. For this video, guys, because I'm on Windows, I'm going to be using the SSH client called Putty. So I'm just going to double click on the Putty shortcut here. If you don't have Putty already installed on your Windows PC, I'll put a link to a video of mine in this video description below and as a card on how to install Putty on Windows. Once Putty has opened, you're going to need to enter the host name or IP address of your Minecraft server hosted by the server host provider. To get this IP address, open up your browser and then navigate to your online server host provider. In my case, guys, it's DigitalOcean. If you would like to host your Minecraft server on DigitalOcean, you can use my referral link, which is right here. I'll also put it in the video description below. This will give you $100 free DigitalOcean credit to test out DigitalOcean servers free for 60 days. Once you're on your Minecraft server host provider's dashboard, locate the server which contains your Minecraft server files. For me, guys, it's this server here called test-server and to the right hand side you can see the IP address of my server which is 188.166.34.247 All I'm going to do guys is copy this IP address by simply left clicking on the word copy right next to the IP address and then I'm going to minimize my browser once again and I'm going to paste in into the host name the IP address by simply right clicking in the text box here and then left clicking on paste For the port I'm going to be leaving as 22 for the connection type, it's going to be SSH, and then all I'm going to do is left click on open. Once done, the putty terminal window will open, and I'm just going to maximize this window here. At the very top, it says login as, and I'm just going to type my root username, which is root, and then I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm asked to put in the password for my root user, which I'm going to do now. Once done, hit enter. You'll then be logged into your server. I'm now going to run the Minecraft start server command, so I'm just going to open up my notepad here, and then I'm going to copy 
the server start command here by highlighting it first and then right clicking on copy to copy it. All these commands will be in the video description below. I'm now going to minimize this window to be taken back to my putty terminal window here and then I'm going to simply right click to paste in the command. All I'm going to do now guys is hit enter and as you can see we get the same error message when we attempt to run our minecraft start server command for our minecraft server which is hosted online on a server host provider which in my case is DigitalOcean. The error is exactly the same, it's error colon linkage error occurred while loading main class net.minecraft.bundler.main java.lang.unsupported class version error colon net slash minecraft slash bundler slash main has been compiled by a more recent version of the java runtime in brackets class file version 61.0 this version of the java runtime only recognizes class file versions up to 60.0 to fix this error message and get your minecraft server running guys we're also going to need to install java 17 as currently we have java 16 installed on our server and minecraft servers 1.18 and a Above require Java 17 and above. Of course guys my Minecraft server is 1.18.1 which also requires Java 17 and above. To install Java 17 onto your server you're going to need to grab the following command. So I'm just going to open up my notepad here and I'm going to copy the very top command here by simply highlighting it and then right clicking on it and then left clicking on copy. The command is apt space install space openjdk dash 17 dash jre dash headless. Again guys, this command will be in the video description below for your convenience. All I'm going to do now guys is minimize my notepad and then I'm just going to right click into the putty terminal window here and hit enter. Once done, the openjdk 17 dash jre dash headless or java 17 will begin installing onto our server. And as you can see guys, Java 17 has now been installed onto our server. All that's left to do now is to try to start our Minecraft server once again. So all I'm going to do is grab the Minecraft start server command by going to my notepad here and copy the second command by highlighting it right clicking on it and then left clicking on copy. I'm going to minimize the notepad once again and I'm going to right click to paste in the command and then I'm just going to hit enter. Our Minecraft server which we have hosted on a server host provider should now begin starting without the previous error message that was displayed earlier. And as you can see guys our Minecraft server is indeed starting. I'll be back with you once our Minecraft server is running. Alright guys, I'm back and as you can see our Minecraft server is now running without any error messages which is illustrated by the word done here. And that pretty much concludes the video on how to fix Minecraft error. Linkage error occurred while loading main class net.minecraft.bundler.main. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Why is it so